Last year, Julie Charles Event Management provided full event management, design and logistics for Horror Festival as part of the Riyadh season. This is a mega event run over three months and involving 100 different events, with the chairman of the General Entertainment Authority saying, Riyadh season will bring the world to Saudi Arabia. The theme of the first season is Imagine. So today we are speaking to Michael, Creative Director at Julie Charles Event Management, all about how they run the event, what it was like working in Saudi Arabia, and his predictions for the future of events in Saudi Arabia. Hi, Michael. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, good. Thank you. So I wondered if you could take first tell me all about the project, how it got started, and how you got involved in working in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, of course. Of course. So um, this is probably a little bit of a longer story, so I'll, I'll shorten it as much as I can. Um, so being involved in, in projects in Saudi Arabia was um, something that we wanted to do for quite some time and obviously the announcement that they would be, um, let's say, opening up their country to the world of events and entertainment to um, showcase what their country is about um, was quite appealing to us. We always got a lot of inquiries um, from clients over there wanting to put on events, uh, festivals, that type of thing. and. Um, We'd uh, worked with a few people there before, um, sending over entertainment and that sort of stuff. So um, we got contacted by um, a, a global sports brand over there who we're working with also as well for uh, Jeddah season. Okay. And initially they um, contacted us to put together some entertainment schedules and things like that and some brief creative concepts for um, a type of event that they wanted to put forward, which was essentially like a, a Halloween theme sort of event, because it was something that we'd seen um, was potentially missing from their season. They had um, like the festivals, they had um, Cirque du Soleil that were doing um, events over there as well. They had um, a winter wonderland and that type of thing. So they were catering to the right audiences, but one of the things that they were missing was potentially something along the lines of a horror or a scare attraction. Okay. So we were contacted by them to put together some ideas and some concepts as to how this could potentially work, the crowd flow, um, you know, what the what the guest experience was, that type of thing, to see whether or not it was something that was going to sort of take traction, ultimately. Um, it didn't really take long for us to put together some conceptual art and um, to give people an idea of, of, of how it could potentially work or fall in line with everything else that was going on in the in the venue that we had we specifically had built for this um, event mm -hmm. so yeah we got contacted by them and then we worked um, with them closely from beginning to end essentially brilliant and i was wondering what was the brief for horror festival 2019 and what exactly were the services that you as a company provided so the brief was uh, believe it or not really quite um brief let's say so more often than not we'll, we'll have um so for example clients if you're working directly with the government or the crown or one of the larger global sort of organizations that work directly with the crown or the government more often than not it's just a, a small spark so it's oh, i wonder if we can do something for like something along the lines of halloween or scare fest or something like that and that's it Okay. And they'll, they'll literally want us to build from there. So we, you know, they come to us and said, look, we, we want to do a horror festival of some some sort. Um, the brief was was very small. It was just how can we make this something that people are going to want to come because there's a, there's a there's an audience for it. Um, once we've done our research as to what it is that they liked over in Saudi Arabia and what people were buying into, how um, consumers worked and things like that and what type of events that they've done in the past that were successful is really quite easy, easy for us to put together concepts that um, would enhance that. So the brief, as I say, was, was really, really small. It was just, we want to do a scare festival of some sort. We don't have a venue in mind at the moment. We don't have a location, although we know it's going to be in Riyadh. We've got a couple locations in mind, but we don't know whether or not we're going to use it yet. So it was very, very much open to interpretation from the outset. Okay, I we put together something as comprehensive as we could without even having a venue in mind. And then the guys over in Saudi Arabia essentially just said, okay, we're going to build an exhibition hall specifically for this and two other events. Oh, wow, okay, that's really good. And so with that, what services were you providing for the whole event? 
So we got to work on overall event management, um, guest sort of journey experience, the design of it. So we put together some concepts working with one of our partners and also some other partners in um, Canada. So we worked alongside them on the production side of things as well, and obviously a lot of local suppliers. We we you know we were tasked with getting a lot of staff in and such like that. So one of the things that we actually wanted to do was work more locally with suppliers, obviously to, to help boost the economy and such. So one of the, the key USPs for us was is that we were going to train up a lot of local individuals to be able to assist with this event, which we did. So our um, guys from Canada what they done was is they put together a team um, and they essentially came in and trained up over 400 members of staff to be able to accommodate for this event um, so there was that there was entertainment coordination and um, overall design and production so we helped um, put together all of the production for from the stage show where we designed this big castle stage um, you know for again we had um, some suppliers coming over from uh, Canada who put together a stage show that ran every single day three times a day um, and then a lot of walkabout acts and stuff like that as well which we we helped out with 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 the guys from Canada as well so there was a lot of services and you'll find with any sort of events like this whether you know on a large scale as specifically over the course of like you know, it was 33 days in, in total, um, I believe. They wanted to add some extra days because of how successful it was. Um, but we were there for around a month. And, um, you know, you'll find a crossover um, of services where you'll have a production crew, they're doing all of this stuff, but they'll cross over into the stuff that we're doing. And anything like this, if you want it to be a successful event, it needs to be a, an extremely collaborative um, venture. So that's what it was. and. We made some great connections and, and worked with a lot of really fantastic suppliers. No, it sounds brilliant. And so there's huge anticipation for this event. So what extra special elements were you able to bring to the Horror Fest as Julia Charles Event Management? So once we got to work on the concepts and we understood that this was something that ultimately the client was really excited about, it was our job ultimately to make sure the user experience the the experience that people had as soon as they you know even driving down the road to come to it to it we we had to go above and beyond we had two events that we weren't necessarily in competition with because our event was so far um you know from the other end of the spectrum as to what they were doing one was a toy ex exhibition the other one was a space exhibition ours was more of a immersive holler horror activation it was uh it was an immersive experience that people were able to take part in and be a part of it so everything down to all of the mazes for example we had a scary clown maze um where people were able to sort of walk through that some of them were statues some of them were real life characters again people that were trained up locally we had a mummy activation we had the stage shows we had um you know sort of laser quest style shooting axe throwing all of that sort of stuff where we we always put a small sort of narrative or a story towards every one of these um you know guest participation activations where they were a part of it as opposed to just using it it wasn't necessarily we were saying that we'll just throw a lot of plug and play systems in there for people just to use and pay money and experience and then go we wanted people to be a part of the story so that was one of our main goals to be able to heighten the experience a, a little bit further and accentuate that and um, it worked really successfully we had people coming back near enough every other day because you know they were bringing their friends along and such and you know social media was um, a real defining factor in that you know the snowball effect of that had helped out really quite considerably so yeah, it was it was the the USP that we brought along to it was was that it was the storyboard, it was the narrative, it was the overall concepts, and it made people feel as though they were a part of it, as opposed to someone that's just walking into something like you would any sort of normal fun fair, let's say. Yeah. No, it sounds really brilliant, and you've touched on it a little bit um, previously, but I can imagine there are lots of different logistical elements that were needed to be considered to go into this event. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that side of things and transportation and how you managed all of those elements? Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are obviously a lot of benefits working 
with the government, um, let's say. So, you know, if you if, if anyone listening to this has worked in anywhere in the Middle East, you know their clients will, will give you a very, um, a very an outline or an overreach of a brief in some way, shape or form, and you sign everything off. And in the last few days, you know, you'll you'll see a bit of traction sort of take take flight and you'll see the success of the event before you've even opened and the anticipation build up and such. And then the client will turn around and say, let's make it bigger. You know, let's add this, let's do this and let's do that. And, you know, it's our job to anticipate that, um, you know, that request. So th the benefits of working directly with the government is, is that, you know, we can request from them to be able to help out with logistics and they helped out massively, you know, without working with the guys in the government and the guys uh, and our clients as well. It'd be very difficult to fly things in from all over the world. Um, we, you know, with 48 hours notice, let's say, or, or, you know, a week's notice. So logistically, you know, as long as you stuck towards a schedule and the build up to the event, which you know, we were contracted to do this event only two months prior. Right. Um, so obviously, once we were contracted to do it, it was a case of logistics is one of the first things that you really need to consider because there's a time frame to it. So usually around a two week turnaround, mm -hmm. um, that's that's a good contingency to have. So, you know, once we were sick into those schedules and we got all of our stock lists sorted and what was staying, what was coming back and whatnot, um, we were able to submit that to and the people that we're working with in the government to be able to say look this is what we're doing and then what we did was we put an inventory together of some stuff that they could possibly add mm -hmm. further down the line because we anticipated they would potentially want to add more because for us as well we we kind of without sounding sort of too overconfident I, I was very much of the opinion that this was going to be a success and i know how clients in the middle east work specifically in saudi arabia and dubai and qatar and such and they would want to potentially add something if they saw that success prior to the event. So that's what we did. So logistically, you know, we, we again, we helped out with, um, you know, the guys from Canada, um, yeah. Europe. We have people flying in all over the world, um, you know, so many nationalities, a lot of them extremely, extremely experienced in this type of, in this type of work. So we're able to pull all of those experiences, resources together to be able to make sure that you know, logistically, we didn't have any hiccups whatsoever. Um, I mean, even to the point where the day of the event, we still had boxes coming in through the back door and unpacking stuff to build things. Or the day before, sorry, the, the, that's a bit of a lie. The day before we had that, the day of the event, we're actually just sort of walking around twiddling our thumbs doing final checks, which was... Okay. Um, prepared. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's exactly how I like it. So, yeah. well, hopefully two days before, but ultimately, uh, you know, we were well on schedule more often than not. So. Um, yeah, logistically, there's a lot of challenges, but, um, you know, through experience, you know that to mitigate those challenges, you just prep and prepare as much as possible for every outcome. It sounds like it ran really smoothly. It did run very smoothly. Yeah, I mean, was, you know, we were working, we were only supposed to do sort of maybe like a week and a half in regards to set up. Um, but, you know, with these types of things, when you get on site, the, the venue itself was purposely built for this. So, you know, down to the fact that we, we only had air conditioning units being put into place only a couple of days before, wow. which we were, we were made aware of. Yeah. But obviously what we needed to do was to change our logistics and our timeframes and our schedules around to be able to make sure that we can cope with the fact that there's going to be a lot of massive trucks coming in from midday all the way up until midnight to be able to assist with that. So we, we had a window there that was completely closed. Yeah. So those types of things, again, like I say, if you, you, the way we mitigate that is by prepping and planning ahead and assuming that we're not going to get the time frames that we're, we're, we're hoping for. Mm -hmm. No, it sounds brilliant. And I know you personally worked really closely with this project and you were very hands-on. So personally, what do you feel it was the company's biggest success from Horrorfest and in working in Saudi Arabia on this event? Do you know what, the, 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 one of the biggest successes from a business point of view and from obviously someone who creates events and you want all events to be as successful as possible and ultimately it's, it's our job to make the client um, happy, uh, make the client look good. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're never, as event planners or creatives or anything like that, we're never in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. But one of the, one of, so there, there was that, so there's the success of the event, which is the obvious answer. But personally, um, for me was the experience of going over there spending you know months there working with the people there working with the locals you know how they embraced 
different nationalities go in there. You know, even even down from when we got into the airport, when you know security asked you what it is that you're what you're doing there, and we tell them, you know, we're, we're on these types of visas, and they say, oh, you know, they're interested, and they're there with open arms. They're just like everybody was so excited about all of the seasons, all of the entertainment. Um, it was as close to being a rock star as you could possibly get. You know, even down to being in the lifts, you just generally just chat to people going in the lift of your hotel and they're just like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can't believe you've come here and done this. Everybody is so excited. And it was like, I felt like telling them half the time, like I've done barely nothing. We're just, we're a small component for the whole season. Although be it, I think one of our event was one of the most successful there, which again is something I'm very proud of. But yeah, the, uh, the overall experience and the people was personally something for me. From a professional point of view, it was the people and the fact that the event was super successful. No, it sounds like a great experience, especially as an event management company, something that you can really shout about and say how successful you've been. Absolutely. So finally, I wondered um, what your predictions for Saudi Arabia events in the future are and also how do you feel the landscape in Saudi Arabia is changing to encourage and celebrate more events like Horror Festival? So obviously as a, as a company, what we tend to do is, is we try and look at for, for trends in certain markets all over the world, um, you know, to understand where it is that we, we point our direction, where, where it is we want to spend time what 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 countries for example are going to start to facilitate more in regards to events entertainment that type of thing and saudi arabia had always been on our radar but then obviously they broke the news that they were going to open up their country to the rest of the world and they were heavily heavily investing in you know that that structure that overall um theme of them embracing the rest of the world coming in and sharing their culture a little bit more and travel and tourism and in general they had you know billion dollar budgets to be able to bring people in and and just allow people to experience and and teach the world a little bit more about their culture and and themselves moving forward so that for that to us was you know music to our ears um Doing, doing the seasons and doing the events there had shown me firsthand that they are definitely stepping in the right direction. And actually, as a country that has so much to offer the rest of the world, not just for us as a, as a brand who want to do events there, but I think moving forward, they're going to they're gonna really look to accentuate that a little bit more and to push that a little bit more because they've got... Um, you know, obviously with what's happened lately, they're about to close down events and stuff, but they still have their budgets there. There's something that they, they're really passionate about doing. Whenever I speak to my clients, whenever I go over there and, you know, you're sitting in board meetings with people and it's not, it's, it, there's a general sense of excitement about what it is they're doing. Like it's brand new to them. Um, you know, of, of events on this scale and they are learning as they go and they learn extremely quickly and with companies like ourselves and other large agencies on board you know being able to facilitate that on a on a professional level with the experience that we have I think it's only going to get better and better um, not only that as well every time we get any sort of brief from them it's always we want something brand new. We want something that's never been done before. We want something that's going to wow people. You know, the type of keywords that you get from pretty much everybody. Um, but they're very serious about it. You know, ever since obviously, um, you know, Julia and my business partner visited Joy Forum a couple um, years back to understand where we, you know, who speak to our partners over there and such. You know, the, the sense of, um, you know, excitement is is paramount for them and i think it's going to snowball more and more and more and people will see going over there that it is a fantastic place to visit and a fantastic place to hold events and i think that will help them in regards to you know businesses moving over there businesses that are already there local economy that sort of stuff I mean, there is a real sense of um camaraderie there and everyone's heading in the right direction i think so i think the future of uh, saudi arabia is that it's only going to get better and better Brilliant. And I think as well for the rest of places like in the Middle East, you know, we've got Qatar World Cup 2020 coming up, which we're heavily involved with as well. I think those types of things are going to, you know, set, um, uh, you know, they're going to want to set a benchmark um, for major sporting events worldwide as well. 
you know, last year, we, or this year, sorry, we had, um, you know, the Anthony Joshua fight. I think that's something that they were already looking to contract and put into place as well. And those types of things, you can see how important it is to them because when I was over there, they were actually building the stadium for that. And I was there for two weeks, came back, went back over for another three and a half weeks. And then it was near enough done, you know. They, they move at a very, very quick um, rate, but they're not doing it sort of off the off the cuff. They're working with the best, and that's what they want to do. We, we want the best, um, and we want to continue on that that thing, that narrative of, of getting the best for our people So and everyone else who wants to go over there and visit. So I see a lot more large sporting events. They hold a lot of large sporting events as it is, and I think that's going to carry on, and it's very exciting for not just us, but for the world, I think. Definitely. Well, it sounds like there's going to be so many more exciting events in Saudi Arabia and in that area of the world. And we really can't wait to see what they do, but also what Julia Charles Event Management does as a company as well to kind of really showcase that. Thank you so much for your time today, Michael. And we can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thanks, Kim. Cheers. Bye.